Hey guys, I was recently asked to encrypt all the workstation in the environment um, using BitLocker. Um, and the problem was going around and encrypting all those machines, turning on BitLocker manually on all those machines was a little bit tedious. And I figured that there's got to be a GPO that can be run to get this going. Unfortunately, you can enable BitLocker as a GPO, but it won't, you, you have to manually turn it on so that you can store the key or force it to do certain um, settings for the encryption. So this video is going to show you how to make um, a GPO that will automatically enable BitLocker and not only just enable, not only enable, but also store the key in Active Directory, in the Active Directory object. Let's go ahead and install BitLocker. If you have already installed BitLocker, then you can go ahead and speed this video up. But I'm going to go through the step just in case um, you haven't. So let's go ahead and add that feature um, to the server. This is my domain controller. I'll go ahead and hit next. So here we are going to select BitLocker Drive Encryption. Now, one of the things you want to make sure is the, the password viewer is enabled as well. Um, if you're using an older system, this may not automatically include, um, which you can go ahead and add that feature as well. Um, usually it's under remote and under feature admin, and you'll see it right here. Um, but in, in Windows Server, I think 2016 and, and higher, it automatically will um, select this. <clears throat> Now this is gonna require a restart. I might as well restart it anyway. If your environment allows you to restart the system right now, then sure, go ahead and select that and go ahead and install the BitLocker. It's gonna take some time for this to install. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back when it's um, almost finished. All right, system restarted. Let me go ahead and log in. Now, once you re-logged in, you're gonna notice the BitLocker window continue. It's gonna complete the installation. Um, just give it a moment for that to complete. All right, so let's go ahead and open Group Policy Management and create that BitLocker Group Policy. I'm going to right click, call it BitLocker Encryption Deployment. So, BitLocker should be under administrative templates and windows components then bitlocker now i want to set up how we store this information we want to recover it in active directory let's go ahead and do that and enable and i'm going to leave everything as default and now let's do the system drive Gonna set it to the network unlock. Now I believe this is if there's a TPM chip issue, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and enable it anyway. Um, I'm gonna enforce just the drive to be to use to the use space only. Oh, didn't select. And then we're gonna choose how we get this information. So I'm gonna leave all the defaults here. You can change it um, based on what your, your preference is or what the company requires. But this part right here, do not enable BitLocker until recovery information is stored in Active Directory. So that's the part I wanna make sure I have here. I'm gonna go ahead and okay. All right, and that's it for the policy on BitLocker directly. The next part of it is that we're gonna now set up the going to add to this policy a task scheduler that will actually enable the BitLocker using the script that I was telling you about. So that's going to be under preferences, under control panel, and we're looking for schedule task. Right click a new task and I'm going to do the one at least for Windows 7. Give it a name, BitLocker. And mind you, the users won't see this in their task schedule. Um, this is going to show only on the administrator side. Um, BitLocker OS drive. And the user that we're going to use is going to be a system user. So I'm going to select group just to be sure that I could get the system user. Actually, you're probably better off going advanced, find now, and we're going to scroll down and looking for system. All right, there you go. 
and want to run whether that user is logged in or not. Um, high is privilege. And so here's what our, we're going to have to trigger this. We're going to have the unlog on any user, it doesn't matter. And I like to do a little bit of delay um, just to make sure the network and everything established before it tries. So I'm going to hit 30 seconds on that. I've seen where you don't do a delay and it tries before the network is established. The next one is on idle. So it doesn't require the user to actually reboot for the BitLocker to take effect or for this policy to get created. So on idle, it will um, run. Actually, I'm going to activate this policy, this idle. Okay, automatically activate. Okay, perfect. And the action is um, now before we get to this part, we're going to have to now share that BitLocker file. So users um, or the machines rather can get to that file. Um, so this is where I have a folder called um, BitLocker Encryption Group Policy Object. Um, you could save this folder or file anywhere. Um, I just choose to put it here. So once you look in here, you'll see an enabling BitLocker. I'm going to go ahead and share this file out so the computers can get to it. So first thing I'm going to do is the permissions for this folder. I'm going to make sure the computers have permission to this folder. Um, so I'm going to choose, okay, so groups is already there. So it's going to be domain computers. Let's do a check name on that. And also I'm just going to do domain users um, just to make sure. Give full access. Now, mind you, I'm not going to share this with full access. So even though they have full access here, the share permission is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to also going to make this a hidden share. So if someone were to try to look at view the shares of the server, they won't see this one unless they know about it. And right here where it says everyone, I'm going to leave it to read only. All right, there we go. So now we have uh, the share setup that has actually have the BitLocker file. So let's go back to the policy. Uh, it's kind of hard to get back in here. Gonna have to minimize everything. Okay, uh, close right here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add the action. Now we're gonna use a, a startup program, which is PowerShell to run this file. And I need to get the location of this file. So what I'll do, I'll just basically go properties Go on to share, copy the share path, and just paste it in here. Now, once I do a slash, it will reveal all the files that's in there. And I'm going to select it by using the down arrow and then copy everything. It's just to make it easier. You, I'm sure you can find another way to copy the actual share. Um, oh, that's not it. And here you go. We go ahead and paste this here. This is the file. It's going to run as the argument. And that's it. Everything is set up for the um, policy, for the scheduler. Um, it's now ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply this policy to the OU that m my computer is in. Um, this is going to be a workstation OU. I'm going to go ahead and link the existing OU, I mean policy. And we are ready to go. Um, just to show you, I'm going to show you in Active Directory where that computer sets. So on the computer, there is, we have two workstations in here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the computer that we'll be working on. Here is it right here. Let me get rid of this. And just want to show you that there's no BitLocker encryption enable on here as yet. So right now, this is how it is. Now I could do two things to get this going. I could either restart the computer um, to pull the policy or I'm gonna, I could run it manually. So let me just go ahead and run it manually on here. All right, let's see if we got anything still. <clears throat> yep, there it is. So now here's the policy got applied so most likely the task the task schedule um, was created so I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that that's the case and there it is BitLocker so now that that's in place I'm gonna go ahead and log off I don't think I have to reboot I'm gonna log off because remember I set a policy to be on trigger or sorry the, the task schedule to be on trigger um for the trigger is going to be um at log on or um, it's going to be when the system idle
That was the wrong password. So now what this should be doing is uh, triggering that um, task schedule to run um, that PowerShell file. So I'm going to give it a moment here, take a little bit. No, it's going to be, there's a 30 seconds delay. Um, and I'm not sh even sure when that 30 second will begin. Oh, you know what? I also forgot. Um, and I think this is going to be a problem. You cannot have a disk inside the drive while doing this. So let me go ahead and eject this disk. I should have done that before. So with that, I think I may have to log out and log back in again. All right, let's see how it goes this time around. One thing I noticed as well that you might come across because it tried to bit lock, it might have tried to bit locker the first time, and because there's a volume in there, it got an error. Um, the first thing it's going to do is going to try to send the BitLocker key codes to Active Directory, um, but yet fail to bit BitLocker. So since it's going to try again, it's going to send another code. So you may, I'm going to switch to the domain controller here, and you might notice that in here, let me refresh, there might be a code sitting in here already. And there it is. So there's one code, the first code when I try, um, but there was a disk in the drive, so it, it couldn't bit locker. So now when I just log in again, it tried once more. So if I switch back to my workstation, um, it should actually start encrypting the drive, but let's, let's see. Let's confirm that. And there it is. So the drive is bit lockered. It should show our progress here to tell you how much or the status of the bit locker encryption or maybe was encrypting regardless of the drive being in there. I doubt it because it sends it twice rather. It sends the key code twice to bit locker. So it actually completed. So there you go guys. Um, this is how you bit locker um, a workstation without manually right clicking on the drive and clicking on BitLocker. Um, so you can actually set up an OU or you can filter this by only um, Windows 10 workstations uh, with a WMI filter, um, anything like that. Now, if you want to practice this using a virtual machine like I'm doing, this is a virtual machine setup I have here. Um, let me see if I could show you one of the settings that is a, a key setting that you have to have enabled. Um, under security, you have to make sure the TPM chip is enabled. So you want to enable enable trust um, platform module. Once it's enabled, um, and I believe it doesn't like when you have a disk drive in here, so you want to make sure that's taken out. And don't worry about these two keys. If later on where you'd actually need to decrypt this drive because of something, you take the drive out, you plug it in somewhere else, it will tell you, it will tell you, hey, we're looking for recovery code, our recovery password for this password ID. And when, once you look at that, confirm that this is what you're looking for, then you provide this code here. If it tells you this one, then of course you provide this one here. So, so nothing to worry about when it comes on to these codes here. All that matter is the most recent one. Um, and it did that because of a mistake in the system where it tried to encrypt the drive, but there is a drive, there was a drive already, there was a C drive in there. Sorry, not a C drive, but a disk drive, which caused it to, to not work. I've seen that um, before where it doesn't encrypt the drive because there's something in the, the disk drive. So that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you guys out. Um, my name is Sean. And like, subscribe. Um, and I'll be trying to do more of these videos as I go along. Um, this is something I do at work. Uh, so I figure if I share them, um, any type of difficulty that someone else may have, they be able to do it. All right. Thanks for watching. Peace.